The South Africa's candidate professor Di Retladi has been elected to serve as a judge on the International Court of Justice, the first citizen of the Republic to serve in that capacity. His election comes after several ballots were conducted in both the UN General Assembly and the Security Council simultaneously. The institution also referred to as the World Court that sits in The Hague comprises of 15 judges elected to nine-year terms and settles uh, disputes between states in accordance with international law and gives advisory opinions on international legal issues and the court is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations and can now add to its bench a leading international law scholar whose expertise cover academia, government service and diplomacy. Professor Tladi is currently an expert in international law at the University of Pretoria and was also a lead counsel for South Africa before the International Criminal Court pre-trial chamber and served as principal law advisor in the Department of International Relations, among other distinctions. The Security Council and General Assembly have agreed on the same candidates. The distinguished jurists, Orescu Bogdan Lucian, Romania, Charlesworth Hillary, Australia, Cleveland Sarah Hall, United States of America, Gomez Robledo Verduzco, Juan Manuel, Mexico, and Taladi Diri, South Africa, have been elected members of the International Court of Justice for a term of office of nine years beginning on 6 February 2024. I should like to congratulate them and wish them every success in the high office to which they have been elected. On behalf of the Council, I would like to thank the tellers for their assistance in the conduct of the elections. And for more on this, uh, we're now joined by Professor Tladi himself, and he joins us via our Zoom link. Professor, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And firstly, congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for having me, uh, and thank you for the congratulations. Uh, it's been obviously a, a roller coaster night. I can um, imagine. And I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Thank you and, so much. And Professor Tladi, after several rounds of voting, I mean, uh, we finally got the final result. We've all been waiting for in the same breath. And your election, uh, making history as the first South African to serve on the court. What does it mean? Well, it's, um, I mean, it's incredible. Um, you know, um, uh, every international lawyer in the world, the dreams of um, being on the International Court of Justice um, and for there not to have been a South African uh, before and for me to be the first is obviously um, absolutely incredible. There's been many amazing international lawyers before me who haven't been, uh, who haven't been elected um, you know, I can think of John Dugard, for example, who was actually the person who nominated me, uh, who probably should have been a judge at some point, uh, you, you know, and that didn't happen. Um, you know, but I'm a, a, absolutely ecstatic to um, to have uh, the opportunity to 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 fulfill that role, yeah. um, which I think is much, uh, much needed. Mm. And, you know, one can point out that, uh, you know, there's often a confusion uh, between the ICJ and the ICC, the latter where you served as South Africa's lead counsel in the, the pre-trial chamber. Yeah. And, the, and the ICJ is, of course, uh, the principal judicial body of the UN and born out of the UN Charter yeah. and not specifically the Rome Statute, as is the case with the ICC. What sort of disputes uh, would come before the ICJ? Yeah, I mean the ICC, of course, is the most um, is the most well known, I think, court just because it deals with war criminals um, and people who perpetrate uh, genocide. So it's things that are right in your face. But uh, but the International Court of Justice is, of course, the principal judicial organ. It is, as I have often described it, the apex court in the system. Um, it is the only court in our system that that has general jurisdiction so it deals with all kinds of dispute the only the only limitation really is that the dispute that it deals with are always between states but as far as the subject matter is concerned it deals with anything whether it's criminal uh, international criminal law boundary disputes law of the sea international human rights whatever it is 
Um, yeah, so that's the main difference. I mean, it's uh, so the main difference is one: the ICC is always a court that is looking at the um, uh, the culpability of an individual, um, whereas the ICC is looking at the dispute between states. Yeah. Uh, but more than that, the ICJ is looking, uh, or at least has competence over all aspects of international law and not just one aspect. Mm -hmm. And talking about international law, I mean, it's a word that, that comes out uh, quite often now in uh, dinner conversations uh, these days, mm -hmm. particularly with what we're seeing in Gaza and is often an area of broad dispute and interpretation. What's your sense yeah. of the role this court can play uh, basically in the great adherence of the states to the principles of the obligations uh, towards international jurisprudence? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um um, the International Court of Justice being the principal judicial organ of of, of the United Nations um, has a function in fulfilling and ensuring compliance with international law with respect to all disputes. Um, you mentioned Gaza, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting. The very first uh, hearing that I will sit on actually will actually relate to Gaza. Um, I think on the 18th or the 19th of February or something, the hearings um, will take place relating to the situation in Palestine. <laughs> Um, and the ICJ is extremely important. The ICJ has a, has previously ruled also on um, uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict yeah. in, in respect of the wall advisory opinion. Um, so obviously the ICJ plays an extremely important role. Um, the, the decisions of the ICJ are not always immediately effective. But if one thinks, for example, about our own situation in South Africa and the fact that in 1971, um, the ICJ rendered an advisory opinion on the, um, um, the legality of South Africa's presence in Namibia. But really the, 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 the advisory opinion was about apartheid you know, in general, and the impact that that advisory opinion had on sort of um, delegitimizing South Africa's claim, apartheid South Africa's claim to sort of, um, you know, um, um, rule in the manner that it might rule. Um, it's extremely important. And I think that the, 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 the rulings of the ICJ, um, even though not immediately impactful, are extremely important in sort of, um, you know, international relations and, and, and international law. Mm. And, uh, you know, you will be serving in this role for quite some time. Maybe if you can just tell us, uh, what are you most looking forward to uh, during your nine-year term? I don't know. I have to be honest, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, I, I've, I, I've been involved in international law um, ever since I finished, you know, law school. Yeah, and I've contributed to international law in so many different ways. Um, this will just be a different way for me to contribute to international law, uh, yeah, an opportunity for me to sort of step back um, and to be able to contribute at a much higher level to um, to the preservation of peace, uh, maintenance of peace, um, you know, and the attainment of, of, of stability. My hope is that my nine years on the court will be characterized by um, will be characterized by a by a contribution to a sort of a more solidarity based international law system, um, you know. And whether or not I can do that, of course, depends not just on what I think, but also depends on the extent to which I can influence other judges in uh, you know in thinking the same way. Mm. And I mean, you're currently a professor of international law at uh, the University of Pretoria. Uh, so how do things change for you now? I mean, you'll have to move to the Hague. Yeah, um, yes, I'll have to move to The Hague. Uh, you know, have to is a strong word, but uh, <laughs> but yes, I will move to The Hague. Um, uh, but I I hope, I mean, I have, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I love the most about my job currently is, um, is inspiring young people, you know, my PhD students um, to, uh, to excelling in international law. And I hope I can continue to do that in some way or the other. So, so one, of course, it means that I have to change my focus. My focus is now on resolving disputes between states. Um, but I hope that one thing that stays the same is, is the ability to contribute to the upliftment of, 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 um, of young international lawyers, and particularly young international lawyers from our continent, um, not just from South Africa, but really from our continent, because I think that's, that's, that's been something that's been near and dear to my heart, just uplifting you know, um, yeah, um, African international lawyers, and I hope to continue to do that somehow while I'm in The Hague. Mm, and Professor Tladi, thank you so much uh, for your time.